Well, folks, it of course is the Kev and Pickle Show, and we are very happy this week to have Mr. Niall McNamee on for a little chat. Niall, welcome to the show. How's things, buddy? Hello, lads. All good. All good. It's nice, nice get uh, doing a podcast with uh, people back home because it means I don't have to tell them how to say my name loads yeah. of times. <laughs> you lads yeah. just know how to say it. Yeah, so I think good. it was. We'll definitely know how to say Mac to me in fairness, so we will like, and especially Niall, because God knows how to pronounce Niall. John, honestly, I've I've had to get like uh, for me gigs and stuff. I've had to get a sign about this big uh, with a light behind it that I put my name on because it's a big ask in London to go. Please give us a follow. My name's Niall McNamee. They get it wrong on the first name, let alone the last. Name. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. Well, look, come here. It's a Sunday morning. Uh, we're having a chat, obviously. Um, so we are. We'll get into all football related stuff. Like I said, know we have to talk about different things like that. Kev, I know you wanted to get right into some music. Yeah, now I mean, just before where, you, people are telling, hearing that, like, whereabouts, whereabouts are you? Whereabouts are you at the moment, Niall? Uh, so I'm in London at the moment. Um, I've got a little uh, spot uh, that I share with a pal, uh, just for when I'm in London, really, because uh, I, I, I've always lived in London since I was 18. Um, uh, but during lockdown, moved in with Imelda, and and you know that was an amazing time. Still living with Imelda, but. I realised I was like I don't know how to do this living out in Hampshire. I need a way, so I've only just kind of settled in now to understanding how to do both. Um, because before it was just a matter of going to the gigs and just going up the road, and now yeah. you know. Um, so yeah, I'm in Seven Sisters, North London. Um, not not. I'm more of a South London boy myself, so I'm getting used to that as well. It's a funny thing. <laughs> I know nothing about London, right? Where are you near then, football stadium wise? Oh, I tell you what. Yeah. If I want to get on the, am I allowed to swear? Yeah, well, yeah fucking yeah. definitely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, if I want to get on the tube the day Tottenham are playing, fuck it, it's not yeah. happening. I okay. this is where people get off to get to the Tottenham Stadium. Um, and obviously there's more people going now than, than, than at White Hart Lane. It's massive. So do you know what really annoys me, though? And, I, and I'm sorry if I'm going to offend anyone who's into this sport, right? I don't mind when Tottenham fans are going to the game. What really pisses me off is when I can't get on the tube because lads going to watch the NFL. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> I'm looking at them. I'm going, who are you? But then also... <laughs> I'm thinking it's so biased because anyone who's not a football fan looking at a load of Leeds fans going up the road or Tottenham fans are yeah. probably thinking the same thing. But because it's not the sport I like, exactly. I'm like, what a bunch of losers. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 Niall, the lads just fly over from here. Like, and I know they're going to the games as well in London to see, to see what yeah. was a, I don't know who played the last time, but there was the rubbish. Like, I don't know who they was playing, but yeah, it wasn't a great game anyway. Uh, but like... I don't, I, don't, I don't get it. I don't get why you'd go all that way to see American football. Like when, but I, I tried and I tried watching NFL. You know, there'd be some times where the Super Bowl would be going, and yeah. loads of lads who you didn't even know were into it are like, yeah. "Oh, it's the Super Bowl tonight!" Yeah. And then um, I actually enjoyed watching highlights of it, and then I realised it was because that they edited it. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. so you didn't have yeah. to wait. I thought rugby was stop start. Jesus Christ! Yeah six, yeah, six hours for an NFL match. Like you know what I mean? Like so it is. Like hey. Oh my god! And also yeah. the rugby from yesterday, Ireland. Shout out, obviously <gasps> Irish boys. You know what I mean? Obviously, come on, that music. was unreal. Yeah. So uh, it was class. I have what, to say. What was it? We hadn't. We'd never beaten them in a hundred and three years. And now we've beaten them three times in five. Yeah. And but, uh, you know what pisses me off? Feel sorry for the likes of uh, Paul O'Connell and that. Lad. Yeah, <laughs> in the you, best team. He never yeah. managed it. I think they, they were the best team. Like O'Connell, Driscoll, like they were the oh, they were the pinnacle of O'Garris, of Irish, Springer, you know. You know yeah, yeah, but yeah. what about people who say it's a friendly? Like, I even I'm in a WhatsApp group where it's a, it's my football <laughs> team WhatsApp group, and they're like, lads, it's just a friendly. And as as some of them are like, it's not a friendly, and I'm like, it's, I'm, it's like the the cult the culture of the two sports are so different. Yeah. Like, there are things in rugby that would never work in football. Like, I've never got my head around the Lions. You know the Lions. No, I don't, yeah, I don't get it. I know, don't get it. And it's I, no. Ireland and, and Scotland and Wales and stuff, and they hate each other all the rest of the time. Yeah. And then they join up, and it's supposed to be the biggest honour. And my mates who are Welsh love it, Scottish lads, English lads, but I, I, I can't get. I, um, I'll probably feel bad for saying this if I ever want tickets to it for some bougie <laughs> event. I, or whatever. I find it. I find it now. It's still no matter what way you want to call it. It's still the British Lions. 
It's still the British line. So. That's it. They say they put the Irish in, British and Irish, to, to try and be nice yeah. and stuff. But, yeah. you know, definitely. And uh, yeah. it, it just wouldn't work in football. People, uh-huh. people would think of it like Soccer Aid if they did the same thing in football. Well, that's, you know, that's, well, that's what it would be. That's what it would be. It would, I fucking be like love Soccer Aid. Hey. <laughs> Me too. So that, that, well, that, that, that's my, that's my yeah. biggest ambition to play for the rest of the world. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, class. Brilliant. You know, that would be classic. Kind of, that's always yeah. been real high on oh, the yeah. list. And, you know, Dermot Kennedy's doing it now and, uh, a Nile from One Direction and stuff. I'm going that. That is well. You're serious. in the right place. That's, that's, that's what you're, that's what you're <laughs> aiming for, Nile. Yeah, that's your aim, Nile. I mean, it really charity football matches because I mean, I've all. I mean, I still play football here. Um, I play for a team called Tooting Celtic, um, which is a load of. Yeah. You know, I met them when I was about twenty, and and it was it was just the best thing uh, playing with them. They've kind of merged now, so now it's London Hibernian and. And stuff, but all the gear bags and film, you know, the jerseys and all that. Um, and just having the bunch of lads there with you, it's, it's you know, it's, it's proper, you know. Yeah. It gives you something I, to do dad, as um, well. Like, it takes you away that, from everything else. Like, yeah, so it does. That, that's it. It was a good excuse as well because I'd always be gigging in pubs Friday to Sunday, but especially when I was uh, when I was starting out, and um, and it was be very easy to just take the free pints at every gig and stuff. Yeah. But having a match in the morning. Kind yeah. of help. That was the other thing as well. I got into another team that played on a, so, a Saturday morning, which was an embassy league. Listen to this, it's so cool. I couldn't believe that. Just up the road from me, all of the embassies play against each other. So you, on a Sunday morning, they're all there. On Saturday morning, they're all there, and you play a different country. So I played for Ireland against Brazil. Wow. And like, um, the, the, I, the, I, I don't know what the rules were, but I mean, if you think Jack Charlton's sort of Japan. There wasn't many Japanese looking at <laughs> <Japan. laughs> But we still, I felt it felt like it was the closest I'd ever get to represent my country, you know, unless I did Eurovision. But uh, you know, I don't, yeah, know. don't do that, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm I ta- love Eurovision. Yeah, I you, love Eurovision. You actually, I like you. your, I like Eurovision, but yeah. um, I, I don't feel like I'd go down very well on that so, somehow. Um, I, I think it usually, I, it usually ends a career, or doesn't it? Like. At the minute, yeah, you're yeah. not getting the traction isn't pulling it, so it nearly finishes your career. Like it's like yeah, being a Bond I, girl. I wonder, like, if you be a Bond wonder, girl, you don't do that in after it, really. You know. <laughs> I wonder. I wonder now if 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 anyone actually won it, what it would do. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, because it feels true. like for, I can understand why it, it, Britain don't do well in it, but I I can't understand why Ireland don't. That's another thing as well. You know, you know, with the lions and all that, we're talking about how things work and different things. I never understood. That when it came to Eurovision, we always voted for each other because no. I thought, like yeah. in football, it'd be like biggest rivals. But yeah. it's weird. I suppose we're the only ones who who vote for each other. Now. It has to be. It, yeah, the voting's a shambles yeah. anyway. So it is. Like, no, yeah. bring back fucking Mickey Hart. Mickey Joe, not Mickey Hart. He's managing. Loud, I really thought. I really thought. I really thought Dustin had a chance. You know, um, I was at school in in Leicester when Dustin <laughs> went to. Um, I was at secondary school in Leicester uh, when when Dustin was. Um, would do on Eurovision and that was an amazing time so I was really excited I loved yeah. us but also just having to explain to all my mates who that fucking puppet was <laughs> we, 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 said, we, like, said, the pu- we said the puppet to the Eurovision <laughs> I was going oh, listen it's 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 like if Rosie and Jim represented you <laughs> oh man hey, oh, that'd be fucking good. Kev you'd love that though in fairness yeah, See Rosie you and Jim been. chugging along on the old rag boat yeah <laughs> He fucking loves that, so he does. Nail and parents like, so he does. Like, hey, Kev, talk oh, to yeah. him. Now you've done some acting. You've done. You're, you're you're now really pushing on the music. You're doing flying. Where did your love of music come from, Niall? Um, oh, uh, I'm not sure really. Like, I wouldn't say my um, and my family liked music, but no more than others. Is I, f- I find a lot of musicians I know. There, it, it was like they grew up with the, with the, the family sat around in a corner with a fiddle and whatever. But yeah. I, I, mine wasn't. My mum always sang. I suppose. Um, apparently, I always sang. I always, always loved doing it. And my mum used to uh, when we used to go on holiday to like uh, Alicante or Spain or whatever. Um, my mum used to go if if you do, if you don't get on the karaoke I'm not paying for you to go to school <laughs> go to college you know <laughs> she really used to push it and I've hated it absolutely hated it because it was embarrassing or, or something and I suppose when you're a kid not many kids like going on it and my song was it's not unusual by Tom Jones you know was, you know Classic. which which now is is, is is a fucking bad boy move but yeah. at the time yeah. felt very stupid you know um so I don't know um 
you know, my my dad always loved Christy, um, and uh, and it was always kind of around the house. But yeah, um, and it, I I wouldn't say it came from anywhere specifically. I mean, we always kind of sang. My granddad was a great singer, and I remember asking him once if he'd ever. He was born in nineteen twenty seven in Clonus, and he was like. And I was like, would you ever have thought of being a singer, granddad? And of course, he never have crossed his mind. And I was like, you could you could have been like Dean Martin. And he went, I know, dead. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Great lane, hey. no, so, Although, funnily enough, I've just I've just started uh, meeting with uh, my granddad's brother's family, uh, who oh. all live in Dublin. And uh, Derek, um, who is my mum's cousin, uh, plays sax on The Late Late Show. And was playing with the Boomtown yeah. Rats and stuff. And I look at that side of the family, and they're all musical, and it starts to make a little bit more sense. But uh, um, no, always just love music. And my dad wanted a guitar for Christmas because he wanted to learn when I was about fifteen, and and he never did. And then I just picked it up and taught myself. And same with the piano. Couldn't get anywhere with with music if anyone taught me. I wasn't yeah. very good at being taught things. But if I wanted to do it, then I kind of. You know, so how, like, um, okay, you learn the guitar. You said you. How do you sit down? Like, you know, you, know, you have YouTube now. Like, but mm. like, how do you sit down and start learning a guitar? That my we my my son got a guitar there a couple of months ago. He's he's finding it hard to learn. Was it I think G major or G one of them? He's, yeah, he's, he's, it's kind of holding his fingers in the right direction. But how do you go yeah. about doing that? I think well, first things I'd say about learning guitar is one, and this goes for everyone: your hands aren't too small. Because everyone says that, because it feels like that, because it's an insane thing to be doing. The second thing I'd say is I wouldn't focus on learning an instrument. I'd focus on learning a song, because okay. if you learn one song, then you can already play guitar. It's just then yeah. about moving on and, and, and learning more. I think the way I learned it was that I taught myself because I wanted to write songs. So I feel like I was writing. I think the first song I learned on guitar was The Man Who Can't Be Moved by the script. You know, sure. um, okay. and uh, which isn't out. <laughs> whenever I watch like a documentary about like the Stones or something, they come up with some really cool blues or bluegrass. <laughs> so I learned this, you know, and I'm like, yeah, it's the script. But um, <laughs> long time ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, so, B- so, yeah, baby, I don't get, know, just, baby like, get back in the guitar or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Although to be fair, actually, my mates were really into. Do you remember that band Noah and the Whale? Yeah, you know, you know yeah. the. Um, yeah. And they're all ukuleles. And my my mates were desperate to do that if we were going to do anything. Because I was always trying to get them to do like a Beatles song or Frankie Valley in the Four Seasons. They were not doing that. Um, so that was the coolest song at the time. So we all bought ukuleles. And I learned in four strings and then going to six was kind of, I think, I think how it happened. But um, I take it for granted. I couldn't teach myself that now. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm very, I wish I could go back to my 15 year old self and just thank him for getting that done for me. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. I wouldn't want to start now, you know. Cool. Um, you're saying, Niall, you're saying you, you sit down to write a song. Like, how do you sit down and write a song? Like, I look at, I'm sorry, I look at Adele, right? And she sits down mm. and she writes all these songs as for many four <laughs> albums now. And it's all about yeah. heartbreak, right? There's only so much heartbreak can go through, I yeah. think. But like, how, how do you sit down and start writing a song now? Um, well, most of the time, uh, I, I, I'll often like sit there and just be messing around on the guitar. And sometimes you go, oh, that was, what was that? And you kind of, you hear, you hear something that, that you want to repeat or whatever. So I, a lot of the times I start, start writing a song. It's not that I specifically have, the way it'll go is Imelda might be in the room as well. Like she'll be, um, we'll be having a chat and I'll be messing around. And then I'll go, oh, and then I'll, I'll, I'll put my phone down and I'll record something and then kind of repeat it and then generally you, I, I, can't, sorry, I, I can't imagine shushing a male to me I don't mean any woman I don't I wouldn't chance shushing a male no, to no, me no no you're right I mean actually I don't shush her at all but I'll be like oh 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 wait a second and, yeah. she, and she'll you know I told her something <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and and you know, obviously, she's an absolutely fantastic songwriter. So it's kind of a nice moment where, and and I can always ask her. I can always go, "What do you think of that?" And um, yeah, and and then it's I, I sort of like um, will be often singing gibberish just to try and get the song made, and then sometimes words just they keep Brilliant. coming back. Okay, you know, um, so so that was it. But but. Uh, I'm, I'm getting better now at having to sit down and write, like, go write, I'm going to write a song, because 
I'm doing, a, there's a film I filmed uh, last year um, about a struggling singer songwriter. I don't know why they picked me, lads, but they did. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> they, um, uh, and, and some of my songs fit into the movie, but there was one that I needed to write specifically about my character's dad. So that was the first time, and I could use stuff about my own dad, but you know, there were things about like he was a taxi driver and stuff, which my dad wasn't. So that was the first time I had to sit down and like go right. I'm writing a song now because I need to write for the movie. And uh, I use bits about me dad, you know, of what the lyrics are like. Um, um, come Sunday morning, he'd go and pick the team. He'd have to grab the whistle because there's no referee and he'd run the line as well. If he could split into three, I'd say. And before the match, we go into the church for some reason, as if missing it could have an impact on the season. So I kneel in my shin pads near a statue of Jesus and play, you know, like, because it's my like, God. because, because, because my dad used to, he, he did, disputes this, but I remember being in church. We're not religious, but I remember being in church on a Sunday morning in my kit. He was the manager. Um, he took over this team uh, in Leicester called Rotley Imps. That stands for Rotley Imperial. And they've been at one of these non-league teams that had been around for over 100 years and had always played in AC Milan colours. And uh, his first, he became the manager, you know, turned up to train in the first day and the manager was thrown down the clipboard. I give up and my dad was delighted to take it on. And his first yeah. job was to go and buy the kits. And he came back with uh, green hoops with a cross as the badge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we were known as we were known as I was number 10 all of a sudden yeah. and we were known as Rotely Celtic from that moment on <laughs> ah man that is class eh? well we put up one of your songs only one okay because we were talking mm. about it on the show and it's one that mm. I heard and have not stopped listening to it, which is, of course is five hours okay um, oh my god right <laughs> this is mad I got a Facebook memory today yeah you know that thing and it's me at a bar like that or just at a table the morning after um, Ireland played Scotland at Celtic Park. Remember we lost? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, it was the year we qualified because we beat Germany. Yeah, she Today, I, I, I didn't check how many years it is, but today is the day I wrote five hours on the train back. No way. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. I'll send you the picture in a second. I, I yeah. literally just was looking at it there on the way up. I was like, that's the morning I was feeling this way and I was about to get the train back. Madness. Yeah. That's class. Yeah, I love it though. Cool. I, yeah, I just, it's one of them songs that's just, when you hear it once, to me, I said it to Kev before, but different yeah. songs in the past. And it's just one of them songs that when you hear it once, I can't sing, but I know all the words. So when I'm up walking yeah. in, yeah, I like literally, I'd be walking in my uh, box room as I walk from home. <laughs> uh, earphones are in and basically on every playlist they have is like a number of your songs. But as soon as that one comes oh, on, it's like, Headset off in case I get a call, and I'm like blaring out your song terribly. Oh. Um, but still, <laughs> it's man. it's good enough, like so it is for me. Like, but uh, no, I love that song. I have to say, of all that, that, that one is top. Fucking Thanks, so that means so much because I'm thank you for that, mate. I mean, I'm get I'm getting used to like we've never met before, yeah. Um, no. and I it's it's kind of a lovely new feeling I'm getting where I'm meeting people who've heard my stuff on and like it or it means something to them. But what I love about Five Hours People Liking It is it was, I recorded that in Belfast three years ago and um, and we were running out of time and I really wanted to get it down. And he was like, I don't know if we've got, you know, um, and I said, can you just put a microphone there in front of me and put one in front of the guitar? So it's one take and it's just the acoustic guitar and vocals and the fact that people seem to really like that a lot of people's favorite song and there's other songs that i've had loads of production into yeah. it and the industry tells me you need to have these big production things and actually i love the fact yeah. that that song is just as it is and people seem to like it you know? I, I think it's because of that it's the it's not simple but it's because it's for you in comparison to other stuff it's the basics you know what i mean it's mm, a yeah. microphone what, what, what do you call it uh, what do you call it uh, probably mean what it is you strip it down it, it's kind of stripped down to it's just you and the guitar singing what one yeah, of your songs and... yeah i fucking love it i have to say it. and that's going to bring me on to your gigs right you oh, are yeah. home as i'm calling it because you're wearing a on dog top okay yeah. Home yeah. on the fifth of December in the Mighty Spirit Store. So mm. are you looking forward to it? Like, surely it's great to come home. It's, it's going to be a massive moment. I've not been back to Dundalk since before the pandemic. Um, I've been in Ireland and I've been nearby, but it just, do you know what I mean? It's, it's, it, we've not been able to get back. And Spirit Stores, <laughs> I, I had a gig booked uh, in the Spirit Store 
in March 2020 and obviously got cancelled because yeah. that was the start of the pandemic. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a big moment. I mean, it does feel like a, a homecoming and a spirit store since I knew, you know, since I knew of his existence has been like the major one um, on the list uh, because it means so much, you know. And um, yeah, I'm, like I'm a, really... Like it's like, a small be- venue now. Like it holds, there's this pull for musicians, like, Comedians, yeah. and everything like I mean, yeah. A, a lot of stuff happens in around the area, and like for whatever reason, like, and then because the name has now got so popular with different musicians, it's kind of like okay, no, let's play the Spirit Store Dundalk, let's play Dundalk Spirit Store, and mm. it's such a surprising venue. You don't really expect it, but it, it doesn't have a massive audience. The holds, it's, but the, I think it holds the atmosphere in the room. I think that's where, where I think people seem to really buy into the buy into the Spirit yeah. Store, you know. That's it, and and you know, as you, as you say, like you know, any any artist of any caliber or like you know, you will look at their tour dates, and often if they're in Ireland, they'll be at the Spirit Store at some point. Um, I think that's a mixture of loads of things. It's certainly a great spot to. It's not far from Dublin, and and you know, it's a great thing to add on the tour, which is like a logistical boring thing to say. But yeah. the thing about it is, is like there's. I mean, I'm not being biased. But there's no town like the town. Do you know what I mean? There really isn't the people. Um, do, do, one thing, I think I think one of the things that I've always, I mean, I'm just talking about the town in general now, is the pride that we all have for it. And, yeah. you know, sometimes you can say it's not much, but it's ours. And it's had yeah. hard times, and the football team has, and, you know, the, there'd be every reason in the world that Dundalk could have gone under as a town over, you know, the last hundred years. You know, yeah. there's loads of reasons for that. And it hasn't. And the people there fucking love it. And you know what? All my family and stuff who live there and the lads who live on the border there, they always wake up and they've always got this great feeling about where they are. And even though I'm in London, yeah. it's very rare anyone in London wakes up and goes, God, isn't it Love great London. to be in yeah. London? You're like, oh, for fuck's sake, you forget. Yeah. Well, but well, they don't I do think, that in the time. Think, you know? like, that's a great point. Like, I think we, people can sag off and dock. Like we sag, everybody sags off their own town. Like we sag off our own town. Yeah. But yeah. how, d- if anyone dare sag off and dock, that's it. It's like, no, I, oh, whoa, 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 what, what are you doing? Oh, I can do that because I'm from yeah. here. Don't you even <laughs> think about doing it? And it is that kind of that patriotism, like was, as you said, a lot happened around this, t- a lot happened around and dock. There's a lot of history around and dock. So I think that maybe that's where it comes from as well. That the people are so protective of where we're from because, yeah, a lot of shit's happened. A lot of ship and it keeps keeps pulling itself together and it keeps growing together like and yeah it is but people can slag it off but no don't but it. see that's the thing about the town Nile right because I by chance and I'm so happy it was by chance got to know who the fuck you actually are right because <laughs> of a place called coffee time in town oh right <laughs> best yeah. coffee in the dog right okay but it was like, spot, yeah. and I have to give him a plug right gentleman by the name of Dennis Malloy okay mm-hmm. yeah. uh mentioned you Timmy and I was like, he goes, look him up. He goes, look him up. I'll see you tomorrow and tell me what you think. And I was like, right. And I straight away went, right, okay, how do I talk to this man? And he was like, you send him a message on Instagram and he will reply to you. And I was like, because like you will have done and will do interviews that are a lot bigger and a lot better probably than us two fucking young lads, right? Trying to be interviewers. But I have to give a shout out to that. But that's the thing about the town because everybody's like, oh, you know his granddad. Oh, you'd know this, and you, yeah. oh, you'd know, and I'm like, I'm just nodding, like, yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah I had a, yeah, I remember, yeah, definitely. But that's the thing about the town. If somebody does good out of the town, everybody wants, you know, yeah, everybody yeah. wants them to be known for doing well. well like, you know I, what I mean? And that, that's it. And and you know, I want the town on my side as well. I don't want to, you know, I was playing in, um, you know, when you were saying, and I think we'll call it home for you yeah. you know and i was going yeah, yeah. i'm delighted with that because i got a review for doing a gig in dublin the other week and they were like leicestershire singer songwriters but oh, i'm not sure about that yeah, lads. No. no there's some truth to it but i was like leicestershire um but uh, <laughs> yeah yeah but no actually th- well that's it i one of the things i really hate and obviously like you know i have to try and get in touch with people as well for my job to to move forward and and there's this horrible thing you get it whether you're trying to contact a manager or trying to contact sky for your broadband is yeah. that you can't call or get in contact with anyone you have to talk to robots or it just seems yeah. impossible to to actually unless you bump into them um you know so I, yeah i'll always i'll always reply do you know what i mean um, well fingers crossed i'm going to see you on the pit. Alone, Kev. I want, 
Okay, well, on, I want to let them know. Hopefully, I'm going to see you on the 5th, right? I've already been mm. on the website, right? Because I'm getting paid mm. next week. And as soon as I do, I'm getting two tickets because I want to meet you face to face. And I want to be like, hey, I'm that bloke from that wee small <laughs> square on the laptop when we were yeah. chatting. Um, so I just I'll have never forget you, wife. Kieran. <laughs> <laughs> at, least he, at least he's calling me Kieran instead of Pickle. That's always a good thing. So it is like, hey. I was trying, uh, that was meant to be a joke. I was trying to get your name wrong, but I said Kieran. See, instead. I was going to say Kevin or something. Kieran. I'll Kieran. never forget you, Kevin. That's don't take Kieran. Do. Yeah, don't take Kieran. Right. There's a, I might be as Irish as they come, but Kieran. See, I had, I had this debate with the Mel the other day. She was like, there's, I said Kieran, because I obviously know loads of lads who are like second generation Irish, and there are a lot of them called Kieran. And I was like, I know a lot of people are called Kieran, but there are people called Kieran. She was like, not in Ireland. I was like, there are. I know there well, are. I met it, them. If but she but ever wants to come on. Name, if you look at his <laughs> name, right, Kieran Pickering is the most Protestant name you could probably <laughs> get for, for a Catholic person. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, that's fair enough, Kev. Thank you. you always have to stick the boot in about that, so you do. Like, I love yeah. it. Like, so I do. Hey. <laughs> but, uh, but no, fingers crossed. Um, I get to meet you and I'd love to have a chat with you in person because uh, yeah. it's it really is a fucking honour. Um, chatting to you today, it really is like a okay. Kev. No, you want to say it? Yeah, so, so now you moved over the last year or mm-hmm. last. So, was it last year you're in or last year you're in? Because, like, there's a like, <laughs> well, suppose... better way you would have been in the dark, like, like, last yeah. year would have a massive different nationalities. Like, you've got a lot of Asians and a lot of Asian, yeah, people yeah, in very, the last very... year. It's a huge mixture of, yeah, it's weird. You know? It's weird. Like, if 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 Leicester was a bit more of a um. If Leicester was like a bigger city or something, they would call it multicultural, but they don't seem to do that in Leicester. They seem to just say, you know, um, because it's great, you know, um, you know, that I mean, where I went to school, you had a mix of everyone, you know, especially the Catholic school. It was just you're essentially Polish, Italians, yeah. Irish, and uh, <laughs> it, you know, it felt it felt like a mafia war was going to start at any moment. But um, take, take <laughs> over Leicester, yeah. Um, um, but yeah, uh, so I went, I was in uh, Leicester City Centre, but then, you know, went out to Loughborough. I played rugby okay. for Loughborough for a bit, um, which was you're interesting. Handy, then. If you're playing for Loughborough, you're pretty handy. Well, yeah, well, uh, yeah, kind of. I mean, people say that, but that people think about like Loughborough University. I wasn't yeah, there, college, do you know yeah. what I mean? It's yeah. just the local team in Loughborough. It'd be like if, uh, yeah, Um that was interesting because I remember joining and they gave me the jersey and I don't only ever played GA or soccer and uh, and kind of uh, I don't know if you lads have played rugby before but like there's a they get a sell by date for about a year when you're a soccer or GA player um, where you don't know the rules quite well enough but you because you don't know the rules well enough if you get the ball you can actually throw the rugby lads off because they don't know what you're going to do so um <laughs> i was actually really good for a couple of years and and um but i remember them giving me my jersey for the first time number 40 and on the front of it was just a big union jack and it said sponsored by the british army <laughs> I was like, my dad was like right get the uh Get the nail polish remover. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Well, give me a look at nail. We do. Yeah, we do. We be in over in Nottingham a bit. Uh, yeah. I'll, be, I'll be a Forest fan, so love for us. Oh quite yeah. Close. Love for us quite close. Uh, yeah, no, not, not that, far at all. Yeah, yeah it's not, not far Nottingham's at all. Yeah. Close. Nottingham's as close as Leicester, really. Yeah. Um, like, from we, where we, we are, we yeah. be going. And you see the buses pass and it's heading to Loughborough and Loughborough University. So yeah, we know it's pretty close. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, love the Forest ground. I I was just going to say nail. We we do a thing on the show, right? And it's called Would You Rather. Right now, <laughs> it's as disgusting and as bad as you can imagine, right? But I have a, I have a would you rather question for you, right? That's not mm. of the caliber that we would normally ask each other. Okay. Okay. It's straightforward enough, right? Obviously, as we said, you have done the acting as well. You know what I mean? So you're in the film, The Foreigner, with Pierce Brosnan, obviously 007, and also mm. Jackie fucking Chan, right? Like yeah. seriously, yeah. So here's the would you rather question, right? Would you rather act mm. alongside your all-time favorite actor, dead or living? Okay, or mm. play living. on stage? Oh, that was my question. Yo, no, no, no. <laughs> or, <laughs> <laughs> or play on stage with your favorite musician ever, like living or dead again. That's a really hard one. See, that's normally where I jump in with a line that we used in last week's podcast, which was, that's what she said. 
but we're not going to do that today. <laughs> so we're not. Okay. Thank God you didn't. Yeah. Uh, no, it's all right. I'm not a priest. It's fine, man. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not coming around for tea and biscuits. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, do you know what? I'm not. I'm not sure. Um, whenever I get asked about the music or acting thing, one of the things I'll always say was, if I was about to step on stage to do a play and my favorite actors were in the audience watching, uh, I would be really, really nervous and I wouldn't enjoy myself. But if I was about to step on stage to play a gig and all of my favorite songwriters were in the audience, I'd be thinking, I can't wait. Yeah. I can't wait to yeah. play in front of these people. So that's kind of, I feel, would I like to, I'm just trying to think who, um, oh, lads. Uh, See, this, it, and this was a clean one. You know, imagine how the dirty ones make you think. Like, I'll say this. I'll, I, 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 <laughs> I'd actually, I'm going to say I would, uh, I would rather be on stage with my, uh, with people that inspire me yeah. uh, musically but luckily that's a bit of a cheat because i already do that when i'm on stage with the yeah. melody so i'm lucky do you know what i mean nice great yeah. plug you gotta get Smash mentioned there we yeah. Go. yeah you yeah. have to do well look <laughs> we better talk a little bit of football okay mm-hmm. so we better because unfortunately for me and kev when we do zoom interviews right we get a maximum of 40 minutes because we don't know how to upgrade it to more than 40 minutes <laughs> and that's how we roll um yeah. you're a leeds fan right yeah look at everybody has the flaws. I'm a Villa fan. Okay, so we've oh. had history. Yeah, exactly. But he's a Forest fan, right? Even yeah. more history. Where did the Leeds yeah. come from? Was that always the team? Uh, yeah, dad supported them in the 70s. You know, my dad's 57. So that's about the right age, as you know, for someone yeah. from Ireland to support yeah. Leeds. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, brainwash me, and there would have been a reasonable amount of evidence to say that was child abuse for the last 20 years, brainwashing someone to sport leads. Yeah. Um, and obviously Villa have been through it. Forest have certainly, I mean, I remember. Still, still going through it. <laughs> well, this is, an, this is the amazing thing is you kind of, you know, I, here's what I remember supporting Leeds, which was like, oh, the Champions League. What's that? What's the semi-final of the Champions League? This seems massive. What's, what's, what, what's debt? What's <laughs> minus points? What's 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 League One? And then just as I kind of came to total light of being not an adult, you know, when you start to really understand football and really like have your favorite players and you think about it, we we're in League One. Um yeah. and and that was character building. I can't say, do you know, I always think about this, and Amelda's not into football, but I do talk to her about it. I'm like it's, it has a massive impact on your life. I have to believe that my values must be better for loving Leeds than yeah. if I'd loved Man United all this time. Because I just mean that in the sense of if you, because I was like, it killed me when we lost and it meant everything when we won and it still yeah. is that way. With that being such a big part of my life, it has to have an impact that we were so crap and so dire i mean we almost lost the club altogether and mm-hmm. you know that would have been a massive you know i would have had to mourn that um but it's well, been great I remember now, one of my years. one of my hardest memories that i've ever had was meeting this me and pickle were in in a pub in dundalk watching it was johnny mason's we were watching forest v uh yeovil in the playoff semi-final of league one uh, wasn't it? league one the league one semi-final and we were tr- three one up from the first leg, we brought them back to the city ground. So it was more or less an inevitability that we were going to win. Yeah. And we ended up losing like, I think it was 6 5 on aggregate. And Jeez. it was, I remember just going, I can't believe this has happened again. And so, like, but then we got, we, what, the season after that, we got promoted into the championship. Now we're still there. Hopefully, we, one day, maybe one day. But it is, I think, as you said, it is character building. It is kind of that thing of, well, would you be winning all the time? We, 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 can you really appreciate football? I, I think you can, I think you can appreciate football like like Villa being in the championship for a number of years, yeah. uh, a couple of years ago. Like I mean, you, you kind of go, Jesus, right, this is this is tough. But like, but it's it's like there. I mean, do you know how when you when you see a football fans complaining about whatever's going on with them, and you can always, as a Leeds fan, I was just get annoyed at Arsenal fans the way they go. Unfortunately, you know, unfortunately, <laughs> I'm an Arsenal fan, and this is when they're in Europe. But then I think Leeds have had a terrible time of it and obviously almost gone out of business. But actually, I forget that Forrest, you, 
you must have gone. What year did you get relegated from the top division? Because we went down in 2004. You must have been 99. 97. 97. So yeah. you've been, yeah, I mean, compared no, no, to... No, it wasn't. No, we, we, we were in the first year of the, of the Premier League, which was... You know, we dropped out of 90, 95, actually, because we... Jesus, has it been that long? Down, yeah, we dropped down, then we came back up, dropped down again. We finished, no, sorry, we finished second or third in the league the year we came up. Then yeah. they dropped back down again, and then that's been where we've been, and League One, and then we back in Championship. So it's been a long time that I've been following Forest, that it's just been... There she are, and there she you, you accept the way you are. Like being in League One, well, it's amazing. That, it's amazing that you've not had a, a proper role. I can't remember, or maybe I can remember, but I can't remember a time even recently that Forrest have even been going for top two in the championship. No, and it was, what, it's such a shame. Seven or eight years ago, there was seven or eight years look, ago we got there. Th- there's a lot of big teams below the Premier League, and equally looking at teams like Yeovil. I think about the League One days. A lot of those teams have gone out of business or are non-league now. Yeovil, yeah. South End. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I think even remember, we, I think we were in the same league as Torquay one year. But, um, you know, that's that was character building yeah. when all the lads supported Man United and I'm going down to watch Leeds Yeovil on my birthday and we lost. And, but, you know, you're looking at Leeds, Villa and Nottingham Forest, actually, I would say, are at, almost exactly on par in terms of level of size of club. You yeah, know, the massive, um, the three massive clubs. Yeah, if you compare them to like history wise, if you compare them to the likes of you know, even Man City or Chelsea, you know, they've not got the history yeah. quite yet. So, yeah, I mean, well, it doesn't matter anymore. Yeah, but. so everybody says Man City were only created when the money came in, like you know what I mean? So, like, it's it's hard yeah. to kind of see the history behind that, you know what I mean? So, like, no. it's like I mean, they've got a big fan, they've got a big fan base, and they are a big club, but maybe Man City was unfair. But I always remember Chelsea were like. And they, they're actually quite a big club as well. But but Leicester, even though I like I, like I don't like Leicester. Um, like I, I I just you know I went to school with a lot of Leicester fans, so I just wanted them to lose. And we're in the same year as them and stuff. But but like you know Leicester would be an example of a quite a small club. Leicester yeah. before winning the Premier League would be on par with yeah, especially Ipswich, but they won the European Cup, didn't they? At one yeah. point. Yeah, um, that's right. Yeah. yeah, I hate Leicester. Yeah. I hate Leicester. That's just because of yeah. the Forest Oh, well, thing. of course you do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah. always quite like Forest. Um, I just like But even, even I remember Leicester were winning the league and, what was it, three or four years ago when the, at one of the stage <coughs> Leicester fans were singing in the middle of the stadium, are you watching in Nottingham? Because it was, that's what, that was their main thing. It was like, we finally put Nottingham, Nottingham Forest. But Le- Le- Leicester, Leicester have that, I might be wrong on here, um, but, Leicester have that slightly embarrassing thing where their biggest rivals aren't. Do you know what I mean? Like you ate Darwin more yeah, than Leicester, yeah, yeah. And I always think that's a bit small. It's why, like, we kind of have to be careful as Lee. I, I, I've been delighted to see the Man United fans. I can tell if I'm if the if Man United fan is a real Man United fan if they hate Leeds, yeah. and the ones that are quite like Leeds, you go. You don't know. You don't no. know anything. <laughs> to you, don't yeah. you don't know Dar- Darby, anything. Dar- Darby's pretty much gone to the top of my list. No, good. Um, good. And and I've and I shouldn't say it because obviously Leeds have been through so troubles, but I've been thoroughly delighted watching their demise. Um, That's fantastic. They should have got yeah. relegated. They should have been relegated. You can't give them a point deduction three months after. You know what I mean? Like yeah, for something but, yeah, that but, they did. Yeah, but yeah, but so should you. Go online technology and all, you know. <laughs> <laughs> speak, speak, speaking of which, where 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 was uh, where was John Terry standing on the sideline telling him to award a goal back after that? But it was he there. Yeah, I, 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 I don't remember these things that happened. So I, don't, okay. I think I was drinking during that game. Um, so I was. But look, okay, I've been waiting to say that to a yeah, fan. Sorry. It'd be, we'd have to mention them all quickly, obviously, because if the takeover's complete. I know yeah. you have a picture with Stephen Kenny on the pitch at Everings you have oh, he's yeah. telling people to buy the tickets um, <laughs> but like it's great now obviously he's back with I mean old people who are going to give a fuck about it basically <laughs> care about yeah. the community um, would you ever it's think just... about like selling out Oriel Park you know I mean have a, st- a st- stage in the middle and just oh that would be cool uh, that, that, I mean that, that's the dream really lads but you know it's a long long road I mean you know where, where, uh, that, but that ultimately would be like that would be the ultimate. Yeah. Um, I remember them playing one of my songs at half time, just on the speakers. Yeah, uh, typically when fans weren't allowed in. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I was like, "Here we go, my big moment." Uh, but no, that would be seriously special. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'm surprised the likes of um, I'm surprised David Keenan hasn't done that yet. I um, I thought he would, I thought he would probably want to do that. Um, I'm sure he will at one point. 
Um, yeah, but uh, like maybe maybe we'll have maybe we'll have a a a, a, a three uh, gig act. So we'll have me, David Keenan, and the chorus. I was and, hoping uh, you were going to say the chorus. I was there going to yeah. say who's going to be the tour act. Yeah. I was thinking, and we'll yeah. get and we'll get Steve Staunton to present it. <laughs> oh, lovely! Deadly. Well, hello, lads. Welcome. Uh, yeah. Well, next he, up on stage. Yeah, Steve Staunton is one of my heroes. Right, growing up, yeah. right, he's the reason this is more last. I moved clubs when he moved clubs. So oh, I did like yeah, Liverpool. Yeah. And then it was in yeah. I stuck with Villa. But I walked past him on the retail park, right, in town two, two Sundays ago, two hours ago. Kev fucks me off on the podcast, right, for not asking him to come on to, to the show, to right? Yeah. So, oh, yeah. no, but here's a good one for you now, right? I walked past Steve Staunton. Kevin was at the Ireland game sitting beside Richie Towell the other night. Never asked him. But, but, Never but, asked him. But he's, he's now at Rovers Pickle. It doesn't he is matter. at Rovers. <laughs> It doesn't matter. Still low, no. Well, you see, now you should see him. His, his hair is darker than mine right now. I'm sure, pretty sure it's it's pretty sure it's dyed, and his teeth are as white as I don't know what. But, but I don't know which is dyed more, his hair or his teeth. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> but yeah, he, he, he seems a nice enough guy. I, I asked him to come to come back to the club, seeing as everything's now sorted, uh, and he, yeah. he declined my offer. Well, but, uh, we 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 fucking had our chance to get him back, didn't we? That's exactly. The thing. Yeah. And and. Uh, and with the with the takeover, I'm absolutely delighted. But you know, if it doesn't work out, then it's a travesty because they've not the lads selling it on haven't given the fans the best chance they could have had. No, Do you know, not, after yeah. the the great European nights and stuff, if they decided they want to, we're going to fuck it up or sell then and give it, then they give it back to the fans. Then you give them a fighting chance. But it yeah. feels it's great to be back in the hands of the fans, and I hope there's money left to invest from all that time. But if they give it back to the fans in the same kind of way that they took it off or, or took it in the first place, then that's a travesty. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Because, yeah. I mean... Supposedly, I think that was, the, that was the sticking point of one of the... Part of the takeover that, you know, you have to leave something in the, the money chest so we can actually try to move the club back. And Because, like, fair enough, we've finished where we finished this year, but, like, we mm. really need to finish. If I think it would be... The plan would be to stay up next year. That, that how, have we got, how, have we, how have we got to that point? We, yeah. we should have been dominating for, for fucking forever, another really. 20 years. Yeah. Another 20 yeah. years. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, Contracts. And, you know, that was the problem. Yeah. Contracts. It's, oh, well. I, I was... It was it's, and it was awful because it, it, it's, it was crazy how... And I'm very aware of this with Leeds. It's crazy how quickly in football things change and you go, oh, fuck, I recognise this feeling again. And, you know, yeah. I, I, wor- I worry about when, you know, we've got... In Leeds, we've got... Uh, we've got our owners, but uh, the San Francisco 49ers are now at 45 percent, 44% ownership, and I'm a bit terrified of that. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Um, they seem all right, but they're American, just you just don't know who to trust when, when running no. a club. So, um, but at least it's in the hands of the fans. I hope there's no, I mean, Jesus, you know, yourself, if something goes wrong there with the fan support, it'd be a fucking civil war. Do you know oh, what I mean? Like, yeah, like, yeah. Uh, yeah. I really hope yeah. it doesn't ruin it because we've had a great unity over the years. And because and what, when, yeah. when I was first going to the games, now, like there was very few state, very the crowds are very small, and then hmm. it started getting better and better. And the fans really bought into it, and the locals really bought into it. Yeah. And as we're talking about the, the start, kind of we went around in the circle here, and I like people love the town, and people kind of really generated themselves towards the club. And I was like, because we love this club. This is brilliant to see. And thousands and thousands of dog fans coming to it. And with stuff that was going on, and then they really kind of turn against the owners. And so it is that kind of thing. You need to keep the town together because you don't want people drifting away again because if you drift away again, it's going to be even harder to bring them back into the whole thing. Is that what Pickle, the, the new supporters club, the 1903? Yeah. 1903. Yeah. 1903. Yeah. So like that's really a big part of it now. That, I think that will really push on even more now when Things hopefully settle down in the next but couple of months. The two of you said it. When you somebody fucks with Dundalk, people don't like it in Dundalk. And no, for argument's sake, they didn't do anything to help the town, help the community, help anything to do with the club. So that's why people stood no. up for it. And obviously rightly so. And but this whole shit about banning people for life if they had a flail. It's like that's what Dundalk I mean, do. The, it's flail. That's, that's <laughs> like banning the late banning anyone wearing white at a Leeds game. <laughs> <laughs> it really is though isn't it that's um, how bad the it most was. exciting part that I remember of the ownership ran by when you were going in through from the so you, you're torn style into to, and you're walking towards the shed the laid concrete like a concrete walkway from from the two stands and that was the 
that was so exciting because I remember walking there and it used to be black dark, like black dark, <laughs> and it used to be soaking and walking through mud. And this thing came that, oh my God, they're actually investing in the club. And that was the biggest investment actually put into the whole structure. Yeah. Of the, of the yeah, but but there was talk but there was talk about the whole ground being done and uh I we can live without that, I think. I, you know, just I, we love Oriel Park enough for it to stay as it is for a, yeah. for a while. That's it, not it, it, um, yeah. Just get back but, to the basics now. Like you know what I mean. There's nothing. There was. There's nothing. I've been on the away trips watching Ireland uh, for a lot of qualifiers and stuff. Um, but there was nothing quite like you know going to Alkmaar or uh, Rosenberg. I think it was only about if there was a hundred of us, and it was. Yeah. The thing I liked about Rosenberg was it was a seriously big stadium and there was a hundred of us. You know what I mean? That was Class. that was yeah. insane. Yeah. And, and, uh, and noisier than anybody. Yeah, and we should we should have won, but I remember just really getting the best of Nicholas Bentner in that match and just thinking, this is fucking brilliant. You know, yeah. um little victory, yeah. like you know, you have to yeah. take a little victory, say. But uh look, yeah. so much for us talking for like 15 or 20 minutes. Like, this has been yeah. fucking <laughs> this has been savage. So has can I just ask you one question about, about the act tonight? What is it like? Meeting the likes of Bert, Pierce Brosnan and Jackie Chan, what's that like? As in, how do you, uh, how does that, does that not blow your mind? You see Pierce Brosnan in, in front of you, like I know he's from Navin, but like you think, oh Jesus, you're Pierce yeah. Brosnan. It's, it, you know, it's 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 very strange because you feel like in those moments you're going to have this big uh, introduction or something, but what happens is you're kind of turning up for work there in the middle of doing it all, and then they're kind of just. Uh, I didn't realize Pierce Brosnan was sat next to me in the makeup trailer thing because he had a big beard and everything and I remember it was on it was before filming started and the director Martin Campbell who did uh, Bond and stuff um, came in and was like no no Pierce we said we weren't going down the Jerry Adams route and he was like I wanted it <laughs> <And I> just, <laughs> like, um, but again the same with Jackie Chan I was just sat there get me makeup done or whatever I was trying to get a Dundalk tattoo put on me but they wouldn't okay. they wouldn't let the logo um, but uh and then he just kind of came and sat down next to me. And, uh, like, and all right, <laughs> well, it's amazing. Back. Well, the, the thing about the foreigner that, that was slight, would, slightly different is it would be nervous just acting in front of them. But the fact you got to fight him as well. Yeah. And yeah. it was my first film role. I'd, I'd been, um, I just got down to zero in the bank account. And for the weeks leading up to it, I was working yeah. on the building site. So to find out that and then suddenly be collected in the car and, um, going to the gym for three weeks before start filming to just learn this fight with Jackie Chan. Unreal. I remember thinking to myself, it was it was early enough in my career where I was like, if I fail as an actor, if I end up having to do something else, um, then I'm really glad that I've done this. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Because yeah. I can always and is say... There any, um, is, that, is there any like imposter, uh, that imposter syndrome kind of come Oh, up? Always. Always, of course. Yeah. There's definitely imposter syndrome when you're playing the IRA against Jackie Chan. <laughs> that's, that's the moment you really go, I feel like there's something. There is, you know... The, um, Surprisingly, people seem to really like that. We were really worried that the Irish actors on it going, we might never, never be able to go home again after yeah, this. But, um, um, Good but yeah, no, def- definitely imposter syndrome. I don't have it with music. I, f- I really, I really, I think it's because it's mine. So yeah. music, yeah. writing songs and stuff, it sounds how I want it to sound. And hopefully people will like that. But it's my songs, do you know what I mean? You can hardly get that wrong. But you're stepping yeah, if, on if you're, sing, if you're singing something from Steps or something like that, it might... It might yeah, kind of, that's it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you're well, singing someone's like... favourite song. Yeah. But, but, but on set and stuff, also as well, the thing that really gets me about when they say action on a movie, especially something like that, is you're looking around you and you're thinking... Geez, they put a fair whack of money into this. I better not yeah. fuck this up, do you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> the Jackie Chan thing. Chain... Jackie changed the fight like 10 minutes before we started doing it and I'd spent three months three weeks trying to learn it oh my god and uh, <laughs> uh, yeah he was like um, I was I was meant to like I had a knife and stuff I'd really practiced it I really wanted to get it right <laughs> you know um, because I didn't want my stunt fit man to do it I wanted me okay. to do it because I wanted yeah. to be in it you know um, and uh, I turned up and and someone went and um, Jackie's not happy with the fight. It's not you, but he wants to change what we're doing and stuff. So I was like, okay. So the fella taught me how to do the first bit, and I was like, right, okay. And I was like, okay, I think I think I've got it. But I'm thinking, why has he changed it? I really got the other bit down. And then they we filmed that, and then we went to the second bit, and he was like, this is what you do. And I was watching it going, oh I'm God. never going to learn that. I have five minutes, and then I just had to go up to Jackie Chan and go. 
Jackie. Uh, <laughs> um, um, I was what like, are you doing, mate? I, I was like, I, I said, I, I really want to get this right, but this is too much. Like, I can't learn this. And he just went, I won't do the accent, but uh, yeah. he said, uh, <laughs> he said he said, I had this knife, this fake knife, and he said, when they say action, just try and stab me. Run at me and try and stab me. And arrogantly, I thought, oh, no, what if I injure Jackie Chan? Yeah. Well, I threw and went flying at him, and he grabbed onto the knife and kind of went, <laughs> and did everything. And I'm just following the knife, but it looks back like I'm going for him. And then he flipped me over his shoulder and smashed me into a fucking table. And I didn't know... <laughs> through through a glass table I didn't know what was going to happen and then everyone else was like brilliant should we get the other fake table in and I was like fake, fake table <laughs> um, oh, man, but worth brilliant. every bruise worth every bruise you know. definitely definitely I'll say. yeah but look mm. Mio, I think we probably covered a lot of things now um, yeah obviously Look at we jokingly sent a message to you one day about Amelda because it mm. came up as a notification on their things in Amelda started and I was like oh my god She's following us like Nailers. Yeah, we, yeah. Really, yeah, we really, we really thought we really did. Yeah, and it was yeah. like starting a live video. And I was like, I now realize that every time I see that, I know whoever it is is not following us. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, it's yeah. All, yeah. Instagram need to change how to word that. Um, yeah, really good. Get rid of the word following. You know what I mean? Just start a video. Leave it at that. Yeah, well, you know. Uh, de- definitely not. I mean, she 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 hates you, lads. No. <laughs> well, she she was like she was like yeah. I can't believe you're going on a piece of shit podcast. Yeah, well, you can <laughs> tell her assholes. that there's an Irish Kieran, right? You can tell her now that you spoke to an Irish uh, that'll Kieran. That would be the nail in the coffin and not coming on. But I'll try and get her on. You know, no, gonna be glad. Well, look at here. It's been an absolute honor and a privilege having you on, Nail. Thank you so I so know, much. Lads. Thanks, thanks for having me. I really thanks appreciate it. No, Nail, listen. Best of luck with everything going forward. Guys, nice, attend to the Spirit Cheers. Store. Nile is playing there. Uh, 5th of one, December, one, guys. 5th of December, so get your tickets. Attend to the Spirit Store. Support Nile. Support the town. And knock it out, Nile. Fair play. Thank you. Man, cheers. See ya.